Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, I like to discuss how Boris Johnson is not for the first time planning to shut down a criminal investigation against him in order to remain above the law and in power. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So um, as a result of the Electoral Commission findings of law breaking amongst the Vote Leave group, and that was partly headed up by Boris Johnson, remember, there should have been a criminal investigation. After all, in this particular case, uh, the group broke the law, but it also meant that it was a good chance that some individuals within the group were in breach of criminal law. Now, we don't know that they were, and we don't know who was, if any were. But the investigation never went ahead. Now, I don't mean an investigation did go ahead and they claimed not enough evidence to prosecute, which I'd have still been highly sceptical about. I mean the investigation itself never got going. There wasn't one. Almost like the evidence that they would gather would be so damaging that they couldn't risk simply claiming that it wouldn't be strong enough to secure a conviction. Theresa May was Prime Minister at the time, but she was, she was protecting Conservative ministers. She threatened the funding of the Met and the National Crime Agency in order to secure their cooperation. So our usual law enforcement channels are now useless if and when there is any criminal behaviour to be investigated amongst the government. It ain't going to happen. At the end of the day, the law still technically applies to them, but if the police will never investigate, then they are as good as above the law. But Boris Johnson recently fell foul of potential breach of the law that could genuinely bring him down. Basically, Boris Johnson is leader of the Conservative Party because he is a very charismatic vote-winning machine. That's it. Has mass appeal. The Conservatives aren't really keen on him. They've never really liked him. Even those that are repulsed by his immorality worry about the costs of having him as a leader. His management style is chaotic. He's crass. He doesn't even bother to hide his corruption. His most recent issue was the very lavish redecoration of his Downing Street flat. It would appear, and I mean strongly appear, that he deliberately hid the details of the funding for this. This would potentially be a breach of the Parliamentary Standards Act. Not because of a misuse of public money, but because of a conflict of interest because it doesn't matter that the money we're talking about came from a private individual, if you accept money from someone, there is a chance, just a chance, that they will expect something in return. And when you are in a position to repay them with public funds, that's where misuse of public money can come into the equation. And when the person who gave the Prime Minister the money just so happens to be someone who has enjoyed lucrative government contracts in the past, suspicion is raised further still. So the Electoral Commission are investigating. They've made it clear to officials that this is a criminal investigation and that anyone who destroys documents could be criminally liable themselves. This is actually a very serious situation for Boris Johnson. A breach of the Parliamentary Standards Act. It's not necessarily a super serious crime in many ways compared to some. But depending on which bit you breach, uh, it wouldn't see the Prime Minister go into prison or anything but it could be a route to him losing his position. Because if an MP is found guilty of a breach of a particular part of the legislation, I forget which section now, I think it might be section 10, but there's some parts of the legislation, if they breach that, then their constituents are allowed to issue a petition to have them recalled. Boris Johnson is in a seat with fairly strong Labour support. It's not impossible that Labour could nick it next election. It only takes 10% of constituents to recall an MP under these circumstances. That would absolutely happen. No question about it. So Boris Johnson would no longer be an MP. All there is to it, he wouldn't be an MP. He'd still be the Prime Minister. He'd also be allowed to run in the subsequent by-election. He wouldn't be barred from standing again, so it's possible he could win the seat again. But the point is, he'd have been removed as an MP... And he could still risk losing the seat. I mean, the Conservatives have just lost a seat. But even if Johnson won it again, would the Conservatives stick by him when he'd been found criminally liable in the most public way? It'd be a real struggle to pretend to be the party of law and order when your leader is literally a convicted criminal. Now, I've spoken about this before and said at the time that this outcome is such a risk to Johnson 
but he and the Conservatives would pull out all the stops to avoid it. And this is now happening, of course. The government planned to remove the Electoral Commission's right to prosecute. They're claiming it's a waste of public money. In reality, it's because the Commission is independent enough not to be easily threatened by ministers. Of course, the Brexiteers in the Conservative Party have had it in for the Electoral Commission ever since they exposed the law-breaking of their Vote Leave crew. So is that it? Will Johnson get away with breaking the law again, um, you're nobbling the only independent body that could actually uh, take him to task? I mean, the first thing to say is innocent until proven guilty. And I, I genuinely mean that even when it comes to Boris Johnson. I don't know that he has broken the law. And if he has, I don't know if it would be a breach that would trigger a recall petition in his constituency. But as I understand it, the government can only nobble the Electoral Commission with primary legislation. This is what I mean about them being independent of government interference. Like the Met and the National Crime Agency are very highly subject to government corruption because the government can basically say to them, we're going to pull your funding or we're going to, re, we're going to sort of uh, rejig your guidelines for what you can spend money on to completely hamstring you. Can't really do that with the Electoral Commission. For the government to hamstring them, they need Parliament to do their dirty work. Now, Johnson would have no problems getting a bill through the House of Commons, of course. His tame MPs have voted for worse than this. But what about the House of Lords? Now, that would represent legislation designed basically to allow government ministers to break the law with impunity, without recourse whilst ever they're in office. As such, I would think the Lords would be against it. It was also, crucially, not a manifesto promise. See, the House of Lords will let things through, even if they're not in the public interest, if it was a manifesto promise. The unwritten rule is, that the Lords are not elected, but of course the Commons are. So in the interest of democracy, they don't actually go against something that was promised to the public as part of a general election campaign. But if the government of the day want to ram something through against the public interest, and it wasn't specifically promised to the public, in other words, it didn't form part of their mandate, that's a different thing. And this was not promised. I checked in the manifesto just to be sure it was not promised. And so they're free to act in the public interest and block it. There was also reported to be a plan to have a committee, made up mostly of Conservative MPs, naturally, to have direct oversight over the Electoral Commission's work, completely stopping it being independent at all, just to make sure they were properly brought to heel. Now, the investigation into Johnson has already begun. I don't know how long it would take. If the government can do nothing, as is my understanding, without primary legislation, then the Lords could block this, you know, and if they stand firm, and so do the Commission, it's hard to see how Johnson can use this to avoid his guilt, if indeed he is guilty, because he can force it through the Lords, but that takes time, probably longer than he has. Now, I don't know if the Lords would block it, because no bill has yet been put to Parliament for anyone to seriously comment on. It's also possible that, with the threat of this bill, the Commission agreed to back off the investigation into the flat refurbishment. Now, I personally think that would be a gross dereliction of duty. I think it's better to have your power taken away than to voluntarily not use it for the public good. Because what's at the end of the day, what is the difference? You know, what is the point of having this power if you're not going to use it? But I don't know. But as far as I can tell, there's, there still exists the prospect for Johnson to face a reckoning over this. He's pushing very hard to avoid the consequences as they could it's not just potential, it's not like this remote chance. There's a very credible chance this could be dire for him and, and could finish him off. He'll have the full support of Conservatives who don't as yet want to lose their vote winning machine. Remember, as long as they believe he will win them seats, they will do anything for him. They're not loyal to Boris Johnson. Most of these MPs are not loyal to Boris Johnson. They will stick by him when they think he's winning their seat. They will abandon him over any issues they think are going to cost them their seat on the gravy train. So as far as I can tell, the danger is there for Johnson, but as this is a serious and credible danger, and we know he is utterly ruthless, with a tame House of Commons at least at his command, he will stop at almost nothing to end this threat against him. We'll have to see how it plays out. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.